discuss. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, let's just kind of go through a quick little review. All right, vertical. So if we have a function f of x equals a of x divided by b of x, right? We said the vertical asymptote is when b of x is equal to 0. Yes? I'm just doing a review to introduce oblique. Then we said the horizontal all was dependent on the degrees, right? And I'm going to write this differently than I wrote in your original notes. But we said when a of x was greater than b of x, when we're talking about the degree, right? When we're talking about the degree, when a of x was greater than b of x, then we had no horizontal asymptote. When we said a of x was less than b of x, then we said the asymptote was y equals 0. And when we said when a of x was equal to b of x, we had an asymptote of your leading coefficient of a over b. Right? Quick little review. Good? All right. Now, these, we know what the asymptotes are. All right? So we're not going to worry about these anymore. There's a third type of asymptote that we call the oblique, or if you just want to pretend it's easy, we'll call it the slant. The slant. All right? So what the slant asymptote, which I had in here, all right, when do we have a slant asymptote? Well, it's obviously not when my denominator is le or my numerator, degree of my numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, and, or it's not when they're equal to each other. But we're going to have a slant asymptote when we have a of x is greater than b of x. All right? However, the difference in the degree so the difference in the degree from a of x is going to equal 1. All right? So what I'm saying is if you subtract the degrees, right? If I had this, if I had f of x equals x squared plus 1 divided by x, what is the difference in the degrees between a of x over b of x? 1. one. So therefore, it has a slant asymptote. Yes. However, if I did something like this, fx equals x cubed plus 1 over x, you guys can see now the difference of the degrees is 2, right? So therefore, there's no horizontal asymptote, and there's no slant or oblique. OK? Make sense? OK. So how do we find the slant asymptote? Well, the slant asymptote, so first of all, we have to have the difference from their degrees, from the degree um, a of x to b of x. All right? Then. The slant asymptote is all it's going to be is the quotient. So it's going to equal y equals. Um, so now what we're going to do is y equals a of x divided by b of x. So it's going to be the quotient okay, without the remainder. So we're not going to deal with the remainder. okay. So all it simply is going to be is y equals a of x divided by b of x. So how, what do you mean divide? Remember polynomials. Do you remember how to divide polynomials? Do you remember Pong division? Long, long division, long yeah, yeah. Division. So when we have long division, we're actually going to have to go back and remember some of our long division. All right? The main important thing, though, to remember, and let me just go and see what I had, um, with no remainder. You guys are going to want to write that in because when you guys give me equation, when you guys give me the quotient, sometimes you're going to get a remainder. The remainder is not going to be a part of the asymptote. All right? So it's just y equals a of x divided by b of x without dealing with the remainder. OK, so let's go through an example. Yay, Mr. McLogan. Yay.